As Christmas comes round year by year, Lord, we're tempted to say, we've heard all this before. We know the story by heart. Lord, Lord remind, remind us, us of the, the difference between knowing it and letting it speak to us again and again. Lord, help us to see ourselves and our own attitudes represented by people in the Christmas story. The innkeeper couldn't find room for you in his inn. Lord, stop us from cluttering up our lives with things that don't really matter, things that crowd you out. Lord, lots of people missed your glory when it came to Bethlehem, but laborers, the shepherds, saw it because they were at their jobs. Lord, we pray that we may find glory in our daily work when we do it as a service to you and to our neighbors. Lord, the wise men from the east journeyed hundreds of miles and went to endless trouble to track you down. Lord, you taught us that those who really seek will find. In all times of difficulty and doubt, never let us rest until we have found our way back to you. Let us pray. O wondrous God, we come tonight with breathless wonder to see the babe who will change our lives. We hear the names, wonderful counselor, mighty God, Prince of Peace, and we are in awe. You have touched the earth this night with your unconditional love. Touch us as well, we pray. Touch our hearts and minds and souls. May we never tire of this story. May we never take it for granted. May the wonder of this night fill us with hope and joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. sang of God's peace that holy night. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please turn to the people that are with you or that you can see signing peace, waving, nodding, smiling, or saying, peace be with you. Peace, peace be, be with you. With you. <laughs>
first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders. And he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
second reading is from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
third reading for today is from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. In the region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch on their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord showed around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I am here bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about the child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, and it had been told them. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace be to you and peace from God, our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, and so it begins. The story of an unlikely kingship beginning in an unlikely place, Bethlehem, a little backwater of a town. And as the author of Luke would like us to believe, it appears that the powers of the world are at their peak. What's the very first sentence after all? In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. We don't know why he suddenly decided to do this, but he did. And because he was the emperor, he could. He was, after all, God incarnate in the eyes of the nation that he ruled. And what's the first thing that Emperor Augustus does? He decrees that there should be a census and forces Mary and Joseph to journey to Bethlehem. He forces them to depart from their home, most likely on foot, all while Mary is quite pregnant. But again, because the emperor is the emperor, he can do whatever he wants. That is the power of empire. The power to command anything and the power to back it up. This is the power of empire, to force any decision upon those who are ruled through violence or at the very least the threat of violence. 
the powers of empire are still alive and well in the world today. There are those who are weak, and there are those who are powerful. There are those who are willing to use any tool at their disposal to exert their power, and there are those who become the victims of that power. The words of the angel to the shepherds show us what a radical departure the kingship of Jesus is from the way of the world. Do not be afraid, they say. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. While the title Messiah was strictly Jewish in origin, it was overtly political in nature, because it was believed during this time that the Messiah would overthrow Roman rule. And the titles Savior and Lord were titles that belonged to Caesar. To ascribe those titles to someone other than Caesar was an offense punishable by death, which seems to have been pretty much the standard punishment for nearly everything in the Roman Empire. In other words, even in his birth, Jesus is already challenging the powers of the world. And how does this new kind of king exercise his power? Certainly not by force. Remember, it's empire-fueled power that allows Caesar Augustus to force everyone to return to their hometowns. The shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. The nature of Jesus' power is not to drive people away, but to draw people together. As I said, the kingship of the man whose birth we celebrate this evening was not your typical kingship. The creation of community around kingdom of God moments is what the Gospel of Luke is all about. It used to be thought that the writer of Luke must have been a physician because he placed so much emphasis on the healing stories of Jesus. What the healing stories are really about is restoration. And I'm not talking about someone's health being restored. In Jesus' day, being healed of illness meant being restored to one's community and to the temple. It meant being permitted once again to enter into the presence of God. The power of Jesus is not the power of empire, violence, death, and control. The power of Jesus is the power of life and restoration a power that directly opposes and subverts the power of empire. 107 years ago, on June 29th, my birthday, incidentally, Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria and his wife Sophie, Duchess of Hohenberg, were assassinated, plunging the world into the war to end all wars. World War I. On December 24th, 1914, 107 years ago to this very day, something amazing happened. In many places along the Western Front, hostilities ceased. It was not universal. There were still areas where fighting continued, but those instances of continued fighting were seldom. And in some instances, the Christmas truce was nothing more than a respectful lull in the incessant shelling so that soldiers could remove their dead or wounded comrades from the battlefield. But in many, many places, it was much more than that. The troops on both sides, weary of months of trench warfare, 
cautiously crept over the parapets and out into the middle of no man's land. They exchanged cigarettes and cigars, cookies and chocolate, souvenirs. And famously, there were even some soccer matches that took place. They talked with each other, they sang Christmas carols, and then, at the end of the day, they went back to their trenches. For those men, it was a true kingdom of heaven moment, a moment when God broke through into the world. The hatred and degradation of war, the power of violence, at least for a few hours, were subverted by the power of the kingdom of heaven. You would think that the story ends there, but it doesn't. Because something interesting happened as a result of what came to be known as the Christmas Truce. Again, this wasn't everywhere, but in those places where the contact between opposing troops was prolonged and more intense, something happened. Their commanding officers became frustrated because the soldiers weren't as eager to fight and kill one another. A German soldier wrote, the English started singing a Christmas song, and we sang, Stille Nacht, Heilige Nacht, Silent Night, Holy Night. This was something moving. Between the trenches, the most hateful and fierce enemies stand around a Christmas tree and sang Christmas carols. I will never forget this sight for the rest of my life. One can see that humans survive even when we don't know anything other than any more in these times but killing and murder. I will never forget Christmas 1914. To this day, some comrades still cherish the pictures of English front soldiers with Christmas wishes, written in no man's land as a precious memory. Max Harold from the 8th Company still has three of them. One of them states, wishing you a very happy Christmas and to a speedy ending to the war. L.A. Prayer, 15th Devonshire. Company Sergeant Major Frank Naden of the 6th Cheshire Territorials wrote, Next day we got an order that all communication and friendly intercourse with the enemy must cease, but we did not fire at all that day, and the Germans did not fire at us. Suddenly, the promise of peace on earth seemed a little less far-fetched. The Manchester Guardian's Paris correspondent wrote on January 6th of 1915, the sequel was more interesting than the event itself. The French and German soldiers who had thus fraternized subsequently refused to fire on one another and had to be removed from the trenches and replaced by other men. They had to replace the men at the front so that they could continue the war. The powers of empire were effectively hindered by the power of community in Christ. Now, if Christ has the power to slow the wheels of war, what does Christ have the power to do in our lives? It seems with each passing day, we hear another story about all the things that divide us. And the fact of the matter is that we permit it to happen to us. The message of politics today is that it's us against them, and if the enemy has his or her way, they'll ruin America. Most media outlets have become echo chambers for very specific points of view. You don't need cannon and trenches to separate people from one another, to destroy the bonds between us. As we become more fragmented, we need the power of community in Christ all the more. Because if we're not careful, we each find ourselves in our own private no man's or no woman's land. We drive to work, we sit in our cubicle, we do our work in our cubicle, we eat our lunch in our cubicle, we drive home. 
and we retreat to the family room and sink into a TV-induced coma, or we seal ourselves off in Facebook and think that it's being social. Or it could well be that our homes have come to feel like hermetically sealed chambers from which there's no escape because we don't even go to an office anymore. Office, home, leisure time, it all happens in the same place now for many of us. It's like living in a human habit trail and we're devoid of the contact that we so desire with one another. One evening, one of our daughters had a friend over and we invited him to stay for dinner. When everyone was still living at home, dinner time in our household was lively, to say the least. There was a lot of discussion around the table, a lot of sarcasm, a lot of teasing, and a lot of laughing. The dinner we had that evening in and of itself was nothing special. Believe me, it was a cheap store brand frozen pizza. And not knowing any better, because we'd never had the pleasure before, we did nothing to doctor it up. To be quite honest, it was one of the worst pizzas I've ever consumed in my entire life. And while I was finishing up my last piece of cardboard with tomato sauce and cheese, this friend said, this is one of the best meals I've ever had. It was later that our daughter told us that common meal times were pretty rare in this young man's family. That whenever someone got hungry, they would grab something from the fridge or the cupboard and throw it in the microwave and then eat it standing there in the kitchen or take it to their room where they would eat in solitude. The power of community in Christ is such that not only can it slow the wheels of war, but it can transform a terrible pizza into the best meal ever. It turns water into wine. It makes people whole again. It has the power to change people's lives and in so doing, to change the world. As we gather together this Christmas Eve, we gather around the mystery of Christ, the mystery of God made flesh, the mystery of God choosing to take on human form, to live in our midst, to be the embodiment of divine love among us. We gather around the mystery of a God who chose not to abandon humankind for something better or, let's be honest, easier. God chose to enter into this complicated, fragmented, difficult world in order to heal the brokenness that permeates it. God chose to enter into this world so that all humanity might be drawn together by the mystery of Christ, born in a manger, crucified, and raised to new life, that all might have life and have it abundantly. Amen. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared. A thrill of hope the weary world rejoices For yonder breaks a new and glorious morn
Led by the light of faith serenely beaming With glowing hearts by his cradle we stand Over the world a star is sweetly gleaming Now come the wise men from out of the Orient land the King of Kings lay thus the lowly manger in all our trials, born to be our friends. He knows our need, our weakness is no stranger. Behold. stars are brightly shining it is the night of the dear Saviour's birth long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the spirit felt its worth a thrill of Hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, O oh, hear the angel voices, O oh, night divine. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
This night, when we celebrate the internal word of God born in us, let us pray for Christ's light to shine on the church, on creation, and on all people of God. Holy God, we bring to the manger our loving for unity among all churches, worshiping Jesus Christ, that together we proclaim the one whose birth brings good news of glad tidings to all people. Lord, in your mercy. We bring to the manger our hope for the well-being of creation, that every valley be exalted and every rough place be made plain so that every living thing may flourish. Lord, in your mercy. We bring to the manger our vision of the reign of the Prince of Peace, that the nations, tribes, and people of all the world will see and care and cherish in each other the very image of Christ whose scepter is mercy and whose judgment is love. Lord, in your mercy. We bring to the manger our concern for those who have no place to lay their heads this night and for those who dwell in the shadow of loneliness, despair, illness, or death, especially those we name before you. Dave and Joanne Stevens, Scott Steele, Mary, Denise Johns, Barry Amos, Mary Folston and her family on the death of her brother, Jen, Helen Zico, Twyla's brother and children. Let the children for whom there is no room open the doors of our hearts to the needs of our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. We bring to the manger our prayers for all people who, like the Holy Family, gather with children in the joy of this very most holy night, that the gift of faith be lavished on the next generation. Lord, in your mercy. We bring to the manger the hopes and dreams of all the years, that with Mary and Joseph, angels and archangels, saints and martyrs, loved ones of every time and every place, our prayer and prayers join in a common song, unite in heaven and earth in a single peace. Lord, in your mercy. Into your outstretched arms, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting Jesus Christ, the light and the life of the world. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, tonight we are celebrating God's greatest gift to us, his son, Jesus Christ. Let us return thanks by being generous with God's people today. Please consider making a Christmas donation to Calvary Church so that we can continue the mission God has set before us. You can send your donations either online, you find the information for that on our website, or mail it in. Please. Consider the richness of the gift that God has given us, and God bless you for your generosity.
Let us pray. May the gifts we share be from the heart, just as yours was that day, God of Bethlehem. May they serve those who look for welcome, those who struggle with loss and grief, those who need to be blessed by hope. This we pray in the name of your child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. O holy God, for in the silence of the night your child crept in among us. So small no one would notice, so poor no one would care. But those who were forgotten by the world, the shepherds and the marginalized, came to worship you and to tell us the good news. Those who have no money to their name gift us with their hopes and loves, just as Jesus did so long ago. The angels sing to us of the one given to us so we might find our way home, of the one who gives himself to death so that resurrection love might destroy sin's power and we might be swaddled in grace. 
In this night, when we celebrate Christ's birth, in the days to come, when we will follow him to Jerusalem, we sing carols of faith and praise, and remember with thanksgiving that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray together. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. take your communion kit and peel back the clear plastic layer on top of the tab to reveal the host. People of God, this is the body of Christ and is given for you. Amen. Amen. Please now peel back the foil layer to open the cup. Brothers and sisters, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Great and saving God, you have gathered your people around gifts of grain and wine, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we, like the shepherds, return on our way, may we tell others about all we have heard and seen and praise you in word and loving deed. Amen. On this holy night, we celebrate the light of God shining into this world and the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ. We invite you now to light candles in your home as we light candles here. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all Right. 
be filled with the wonder of Mary, with the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, and the peace of the Christ child. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Glory to God in the highest. Peace Peace to to God's God's people people on earth. earth. As heralds of God's peace, go forth in joy to love and serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God. Thank you.